Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about power. Power is the rate of change of energy with time. As engineers, we're always trying to perform some task by moving energy around, so power is a very important parameter. In electrical circuits, elements can either absorb or generate power. If an element absorbs power, it's converting electrical energy to some non-electrical form. For example, resistors absorb power by converting electrical energy into heat. If an element generates power, it's converting non-electrical energy to electricity. A battery, for example, will typically generate power by converting chemical energy into electricity. Be careful, though. A battery can absorb electrical power. That's exactly what's happening when we charge a battery. Capacitors are another example of a circuit component which can both absorb and generate power. They absorb power when they're charging, and they generate power when they discharge. In this video, we'll see how to use the relative signs of the voltage and current of an element to determine whether the element is absorbing or generating power. Regardless of what type of system we're talking about, power is defined as the rate of energy transfer, or equivalently, the rate at which work is being done. For electrical systems, voltage is an energy difference that a charge has at two different points. Another way to look at this is that voltage is the work done in moving a charge from one point in a circuit to another. Current is the rate at which charge is moving between two points. Therefore, electrical power is the product of voltage times current. This is the rate at which work is being done by moving charges from one voltage level to another. As usual, units of power are watts, which is exactly the same as joules per second. Whenever we determine the power of a circuit element, we need to keep track of whether the element's absorbing or generating power. As we saw already, electrical power is the product of voltage and current for a particular circuit element. The sign on the power is what indicates whether the element is absorbing or generating power. If the power is positive, the element's absorbing power. It's converting electrical energy to some other form. If the power is negative, the element's generating power. It's providing electrical energy to the circuit. Now, we always use the passive sign convention to assign reference voltage polarity and current directions for each of our passive components. The actual signs relative to this sign convention define the signs of the voltage and current you plug into your power calculation. This means that power will be positive if the actual voltage and current are consistent with the passive sign convention. If they're opposite to the passive sign convention, power is negative. Now let's look at a couple of examples relative to calculating power for circuit elements if we're given actual voltages and currents for those elements. In our first example, we have an actual 3 volt voltage difference where this voltage is 3 volts higher than this voltage. We're also given that we've determined that the current into this terminal is 2 amps. Current is entering the positive voltage terminal. That's already consistent with the passive sign convention. We don't need to play any games with this particular example. This is just 2 amps times 3 volts. This is 6 watts. It's a positive number, so this is absorbing power. Our second example, however, we're given that the voltage across this element is 3 volts, with this voltage being higher than this voltage. We're also given that the actual voltage is 1 amp going in this direction. So the actual voltage and current has the current entering the negative voltage terminal. That doesn't work relative to finding the signs of these guys. I need to redefine one or the other such that the assumed current direction is entering the positive voltage terminal. If I swap these terminals, I change the sign on the voltage. Now one amp is entering the positive terminal of a negative 3 volt voltage. So we have one amp times minus 3 volts. This is minus 3 watts. This particular element is generating power. Finally, in this particular example, we're given that our reference current direction is this direction. However, the current's negative. It's a negative 2 amps. On top of that, this current is entering the negative voltage terminal of a 5 volt voltage difference, where this voltage is 5 volts higher than this voltage. We need to redefine either our current direction or our voltage polarity such that positive current enters the positive voltage terminal. I'll switch the polarity on my voltage 
so that this is my assumed higher voltage. If I switch the polarity, I change the sign. Now I have current entering the positive voltage terminal. So power is a current is negative 2 amps times a minus 5 volt voltage difference. This is 10 watts. This element is absorbing power. Now, just to make sure that we really emphasize what's going on with this, I'll do a couple more examples. I want to determine the power absorbed by this circuit element here. I'm giving the voltage difference across the circuit element is 3 volts, and that this voltage is actually 3 volts higher than this voltage. We're also given that the current through the element is 2 amps, and it's going in this direction. This current is entering the negative voltage terminal that's inconsistent with the passive sign convention. We have to change either the voltage polarity or the current direction to make it consistent with the passive sign convention. On the last slide, I always change the voltage polarity. Let's change the current direction here. I want my positive current to be entering the positive voltage terminal. If I change my current direction, I have to change my sign on current. This is now negative 2 amps. The power for this element is minus 2 amps times 3 volts, which is minus 6 watts. So it's a negative 6 watts absorbed, so this is actually generated. Finally, let's take a look at this problem. This circuit element absorbs 10 watts of power. We know the voltage difference across the element. It's 2 volts, and my voltage here is higher than my voltage here. If this is a positive number, I know that current is entering the positive voltage terminal, which I would always define things that way anyway. So I have some unknown current I going in here. So 10 watts, which is positive, is equal to 2 volts times I. So I is equal to 5 amps. 10 over 2 is 5. It's a positive number. This is actually the direction that the current is going in. Finally, let's take a look at the principle of conservation of power. Conservation of power simply states that for a closed system, the total energy absorbed in the system is balanced by the total energy generated. This fact can be very useful for double checking results of analyses and measurements. An alternate way of stating the law of conservation of power is that the algebraic sum of all the power in the circuit must be zero. This approach, of course, requires us to keep track of the signs on the power. Since absorbed power has a positive sign and generated power has a negative sign, if we add them up with the appropriate signs, we get zero if the absorbed and generated powers are equal. Now let's do a quick example to see how we can use this in circuit analysis. Now, what we want to do is for this circuit, determine the power absorbed or generated by this voltage source V sub S. We're given the current and the voltage difference for this circuit element. We're given the current and the voltage difference for this circuit element. And we're given the current and the voltage difference for this circuit element. So we know the power of all of these guys. If we know that the total power in the circuit has to sum to 0, if we add this power, this power, this power, and the power of this guy, we'll get 0. That'll let us know what the power of this voltage source is. So let's go ahead and calculate our powers of these individual elements. I'll call this element 1. Its power is going to be P1. I've got 2 amps entering the positive voltage terminal of a 1 volt difference. So these are consistent with the passive sign convention. I don't need to do any changes as far as signs. So this element is absorbing 2 watts of power. This voltage source has 3 amps going this way. It's entering the negative voltage terminal. I'll call the power of this 3 amp source P3A. One, of the, uh, one or the other of these has to change its sign. I'll arbitrarily say that the sign change is going to be absorbed into the current, minus 3 amps. This guy is generating 6 watts of power. Finally, for this one, I'll call him element 2. So P2, I have 1 amp going into the positive terminal of a 2 volt voltage difference. These are consistent with the passive sign convention. I don't need to change the signs of anything. So this is 1 amp times 2 volts is 2 watts. 
Now, conservation of power says that this power plus this power plus this power plus this power, which I'm going to call P sub Vs, is zero. So P sub Vs plus P1, which is two watts, plus P3 amps, which is minus six watts, plus P2, which is two watts, is equal to zero. Therefore, the power of this voltage source is two watts it is actually absorbing power.